Hey, uh, Shane the Crane Guy, I'm working on a Grove today, RT890E, and this one's based off of 85% uh, st stability on the outriggers here. Uh, I'm just going to cover the load chart, uh, go over it briefly. Um, this could be a review for any type of load chart that you're, you're um, going over before you run a crane, or if you're about to take a test, uh, I would definitely look over the load charts and uh, see what it has for you because every crane is a little bit differently but they all have about the same um, general notes um, and I would definitely cover this before you run a crane or if you're about to take a CCO test or CIC test then I would definitely look at this stuff before um, you take the actual test because it's going to have material information in here about your crane that's crane specific um, other stuff is just general knowledge um, there is one thing to note in here, um, there's a note about the bold line on your load charts that anything above it is structural, everything below it um, would be on a tipping axis, so they're saying, hey, don't trust the cranes to tip before it breaks if it's below the bold line, so that's that's definitely a note you, wanna, you want to uh, heed to. Um, other stuff talks about, you know, not having the the jib on there when you decide to break the crane down and move the crane on site. This one has the big tires on an RT rough terrain, so um, you're going to be working on a site somewhere, and they you know everybody wants you to break it down and go to the next location. So um, it does have notes in here about what to do and what not to do. Um, this is just some general other stuff about it. They go over um, if you have. The extensions on there how much you need to deduct for it um, talks about the, the auxiliary nose the deduction for that one which is usually about a hundred pounds this one's 133 pounds so it's gonna it's gonna vary for per crane here's the different balls and blocks that can go on it sometimes you have more than one this one obviously has an option to have both on there if you need that depending on what you're picking up but then you got to deduct accordingly um, for that uh, different parts of line right here and then we'll flip on over if you're working on a job site and they have a 40-foot building and they really need to figure out if you're able to pick something up well hey you can you can measure the distance between the building and you and we'll say hey you're about 40 feet away and the building's 40 feet tall and so you can stick a piece of paper here or if you can't do that you stick your finger there whatever you got to do and uh, you can, you know, take another piece of paper and angle it down and be able to figure out, can I clear that building while maintaining, um, without running the crane into the building and still have the load capacity, uh, which comes in later. So this is just your range diagram. That's really going to help you figure out what kind of setup you need on a job site. Um, they say you got to go 130 feet. Uh, well, can I do that? So here's 130 feet, and you, know, you got to figure out if I put this extension on there, am I going to be able to reach it? And and this will be able to tell you that. So um, here's the load charts. This one has uh, boom sections. You're you're able to you know scroll over here to the controls. You're able to have boom telescope section mode A and B, and then it has um, doing it manually. You can um, do the middle one or you can do the, the inner uh, section. This is only a three section uh, boom, uh, but you're able to um, decide which sections you want to push out first. One second. All right, and here's the load charts for it. Again, that bold line, everything up here is structural, everything down here is tipping. So if you if you decide to go to 22,000 pounds, can the crane do it? More than likely. But I wouldn't trust it because the crane is going to break before it'll tip in this instance. So um, little things about uh, load charts on your left-hand side. This is the radius and feet telling you, hey, how far out the crane needs to be or how far out your load is. And that's based on... A couple different factors but basically you measure from the pin here 
to the tip of your hook right there. Just the center of the hook. If you drew a line between between the ball and the hook, that would be the center of your load, uh, where the where the block would be or the ball would be in from this pin right here. Um, actually, I stand corrected. It's not the pin. I'm sorry. That's for something else. It's the the center of your rotating axis, which is which is the center out there. The, you got a little wheel that you're spinning around here, and directly in the middle there would be your center. Most cranes. Sorry, I stuttered for a minute there. Most cranes are going to have a measurement written on the front or the sides, and they're going to tell you exactly uh, what that measurement is so you don't have to pull a tape from out there to the, to, to the center of your rotating axis every time to figure it out. So you'll have a standard measurement of 11.5, 11.6 um, inches, and then you'll, you'll be able to pull off of the front and go to where you need to go to get the rest of your measurements and then obviously you're going to add it back in to figure out hey you know that's my radius so radius is pretty important different things can affect that radius and that can be covered at a different time um, other things about this is going to be obviously your main boom length um, right now my current setup is 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 not listed here I'm definitely all the way out out with my main boom at 141 but I also have um, the stinger on there. I have an extension. Uh, if you can see it or not, but I have an extension and a stinger on there, so that's that puts me at roughly around 198, almost 200 feet. So um, this definitely isn't the right load chart for it, but um, this will. If you, this was your load chart, you would definitely want to cover. Hey, I need to go 80 feet, and I got my boom all the way out. How much can I pick up? And so you know, you, you pull this down, and then you go over. 80 feet and you know you can pick up 9,380 feet or 380 pounds all right um, what's going to come off of that is the weight of your blocks your balls uh, if you happen to be picking up from the main and you have an extension sticking out that's drastically going to reduce uh, how much you can pick up so um, if we flip on over to different load charts you really got to find the right load chart that you're working with this one has you on outriggers and you got to read up top because everything that's crucial about load charts is going to be found at the top here. Uh, this one has you on outriggers fully extended, and they're saying, hey, you could spin all the way around 360, and it doesn't matter where you're at, you're going to be able to pick this up. So that's important too. Uh, this one, if you read at the top, they have limited your outriggers, and if you get on a job site and you're not able to um, get your outriggers all the way out, then you would need to use this 50%. Um, extended outriggers um, load chart. Over here is the same thing, um, but you have um, zero percent. You're basically just pushing them down into the ground instead of being on um, your tires. I wouldn't recommend tires. Most most don't. Most manufacturers don't recommend, or um, companies don't recommend that you work on your rubbers because then you're depending on uh, <clears throat> the inflation of the tires and um, the ground stability. So there's a lot of other factors involved there. Um, if you can put your outriggers out, do it, because uh, then it el eliminates um, other things happening on a job site that you don't, you don't want. Um, this is talking about pick and carry operations. Um, that's a load chart you'd use for that. Uh, this one has uh, mode B. The other ones, I believe, had mode A. Anybody caught that or not? Let's see, so yes, this one had mode A, this one has mode B, so you got to pay attention to that, which mode you're in. Currently, I'm in uh, mode B. Um, that's what I was told, and, and we'll get into that here in a second, uh, what I needed to be in based on my setup. So let's go ahead and find my setup, um, which is actually right here. And uh, right now, uh, I have the 56-foot length in, and I'm zero degree offset all this stuff matters and right now I can get 145 feet and I can pick up 1130 well that's incorrect they've marked it down correctly but I have to take that 1130 and I know and I've already looked at the ball I needed to deduct the uh, weight of the ball which is 800, 
and 50 pounds. So that leaves me with roughly only three, roughly 300 pounds. And that's on a, that's on a good non-windy day. Uh, perfect conditions. You're on level ground. You've leveled the crane out correctly. Uh, so I wouldn't, I don't know if, I haven't gone out to 145 feet because I don't feel comfortable. Most of the time I'm stopping at 130, 135 to pick up what I'm doing out here. And that kind of gives me some extra uh, fudge room um, for variables uh, that are out of my control and in my control. If I swing too fast and side load the crane, um, then, um, which is going to happen. Um, manufacturers counting on, on you doing that. All crane, all crane operators side load their crane, but it's how much are you going to side load your crane is what matters in the end there. Um, if you're swinging to, to get to a particular location, then um, side loading is okay because um, obviously when you start traveling, the load isn't going to follow you right away. It's until you start swinging that the load starts catching up to you and then you got to catch your load and uh, keep that underneath your, your ball. Um, the head of your boom as much as possible. So, so I'm currently on the zero offset, 56 degree, 56 foot length, and most of the time I am picking 130, 135 feet on this particular job site. And so, this is what I have to stay under. I usually stay under 15, a um, thousand to 1500 pounds, because um, you got to account for the the ball deductions, and you also have to account for the line deductions, but um, it's kind of kind of minimal a pound I think it's a pound per foot on this one which is covered in the front section which we covered earlier um, this is what I, they also have is a 50 foot extension on this one on node B and they got a few other load charts on here um, that pretty much sums it up for this one um, definitely again read over the uh, the um, your table of contents your notes in the front here um, there's a lot of stuff in the load chart as you're going through it uh, where they'll tell you to, hey, refer to um, refer to note 16 or refer to note 15. And all they're trying to do is just bring your attention to some of the stuff that, that could uh, cause some damage uh, or might cause you to have a bad day. So um, that covers it for this one. Um, I'll cover more in more videos. You have a good day.